Nicholas, um, thank you for joining me here for our post-conference um, um, interview. Um, you mentioned the need for closer dialogue or, uh, between shippers and, and, and ocean carriers and your market adjustment factor pr uh, protocol. Could you just elaborate on that a little bit more? Yes, uh, John, this is something that uh, we have seen. Uh, you know, we, we spend a lot of time uh, negotiating, but also discussing with our, our customers. And then by discussing with them, by listening to them, by uh, seeing what they were asking for, we, we came with this new uh, uh, protocol or this new ID to, to have uh, what we call the MAF, the MAF, mm. uh, which gives, uh, let's say, uh, at the same time, stable price, but also keeps a reference to uh, the market. Okay. And have you spoken to certain selected clients about your MAF and what's been the general reaction? Yes, we, we, we do and uh, we propose it to uh, all uh, the customers with whom we are dis discussing long-term uh, contracts, even those who are not using long-term contracts. Uh, we discuss it with them and we start to, to have few success. We've already signed uh, the first contracts, including this new clause. And can you say who you've signed that contract with or is that confidential? At this stage it uh, remains confidential and we'll, we'll see if the customers themselves want to uh, reveal it. They have not given us the permission so far so we, we, we keep it for, for time being confidential. Okay. And when it comes to a MAF, are you looking at a multi-year uh, contract or would uh, you sign a MAF for, for a, a, a six month or a year's contract? No, the, the idea is to again change uh, the, the way we are dealing with our customers and the idea is to go for longer term. Uh, and typically we would go for two years or maybe even three years uh, to, to sign a, a math contract. This is really what we are trying now to, to push uh, forward. Okay, okay. Uh, a lot of talk has been uh, mentioned at the conference this morning about the carriers differentiating their services. Uh, with some of your customers, have you been asked to differentiate your services and if so, what are they asking you to do as a company? Well, w every customer is, is different and this is the first uh, element of differentiation. Every customer has different needs and our answer to that is to uh, offer to each individual customer a, a different uh, type of service, a different uh, type of uh, uh, facilities that, that, they, that will reply exactly to their own demand. This is what we consider as differentiation. Finally, just changing tack a little bit, uh, what with the MERSC order for these 18,000 super post Panamax vessels, do you see that as reshaping the market? Do you see this as leading to other carriers as, let's say, having to follow the Joneses and get those same economies of scale and I think as you put it this morning, get those cleaner ships into service? Let's say this is a normal uh, development of the market. Uh, when I participated to this uh, nice conference uh, uh, 10 years ago, our ships, uh, our largest ship was uh, f less than 5,000 TUs. So it's really a normal development uh, which uh, is taking place. It is not abnormal that the leader of the market is ordering uh, the larger ships. Nothing uh, spectacular in it. This is just a logical and normal development of the market. Nicholas, thank you very much indeed. You're welcome.